What's up everyone, this is Ash Moreau at the Life Rhythm interview series here at the Garage Cuts and Coffee. Really excited to be here because it's an awesome aesthetic. We have an awesome guest, Hollis. He's been in the industry ever since he's been 10. So he's been through the ins and outs from when he was 10 to now being an adult. First starting out in the Christian music side of things and now getting into the R&B side of things. And I wanna give him a chance to kind of talk about a little of his experience in the Christian music side of things and what part of that journey has really added to his passion and his inspiration to become the R&B singer that he is today. So um, yeah, my, my brother, my sister, uh, my mom, you know, my whole family really was was really heavily into music. My mom got me into a gospel choir when I was 10 years old. Um, they came to my school, I auditioned for them and ended up making it into the group. Um, but I, I found that during that process, I always faced like, you know, people not really believing in me. You know what I'm saying? I always had a, a, a want to, you know, do more. I just always felt like I needed to do something. And, you know, I never got that opportunity. Um, and of course, I was a kid, so I was limited. You know what I'm saying? So um, all those experiences, you know, singing gospel and traveling and, you know, winning awards and stuff like that, um, it, it, it influenced me to, you know, want to be in business for myself, be a solo artist. So, um, you know, I finally had the voice I finally have the ability to do what you know what it is that I want, and I can make the music that I want. And um, yeah, I'm loving it. And you've been able to take that experience too, being in the music industry, to understand of like how to create the persona that you've created as Hollis Jordan to set yourself apart from others. Um, I'm interested to hear more about um, the Christian side of the music business versus what you've experienced now in the R&B music industry as well? It, it was really tough, man, because, you know, it was, it was really strict. We couldn't wear certain haircuts. We couldn't wear certain clothes. You know, we literally had to sacrifice everything. Like we birthday parties and hanging out with friends and family. Um, it wasn't a lot of that going on, but um, I, I used to think that, you know, it's, it's, it's Christian music. So, you know, people, these people should be good people, you know what I'm saying? But I learned that the hard way that they, you know, they, they aren't always the nicest people. Um, and I actually remember the guy who was like over everything telling me like, you know, cause they always used to say, oh, you have that R&B spirit, you have that secular spirit floating, floating around. And he was like, well, if you want to do R&B, I hope that everything that you try, are trying to do fails. And that really stuck with me because I'm like, these are supposed to be like religious people. Like, you know what I'm saying? I never thought, you know, it would, it would get like that. But um, yeah, man. And then, you know, transitioning over to when I started doing my own thing, you know, you meet people, this person introduces you, introduces you to this person. And um, it's just like, it's just, it's a, it's a big game, man. And um, I, I got into music because I love the craft. You know, but I do understand that this part of the game, it comes with the game, you know, so you got to learn how to take the good with the bad, you know, and, I, and I've learned that, you know what I'm saying? And it sounds like you've started to meet the right people, too. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing, like, after the, the couple, you know, the 10-year time frame or the 18-year time frame, and I don't know how long you've been doing R&B specifically, but you've started to find the right people to surround yourself that are now supportive. And I'm curious to hear more about that process and some of the, like the key indicators of like saying this person is to be trusted. Well, the, f the first step that, that I made um, was not being afraid to, you know, expose myself. Um, and my mom helped me with that because for a long time I would just sit in my bedroom and make music and post it online praying someone would come and find me and pluck me out of the, 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 the group and you know give me a deal or something. Um, but it wasn't until I started doing street performances. Um, I went downtown and at first I was, a, I was completely against it. I thought it was like panhandling. So I didn't want to do it at all, but um, I ended up doing it and um, I made some money. That was a good thing. Yeah. But the most important part was being able to meet 
you know, all those people. Um, what, you know, people are videotaping me and they're posting it online. So people are seeing me. Um, and then I'm at another location and people are walking up and here's my car. You know, you want to do some business? Let's do this. Blah, blah, blah. So I met a lot of people doing that. And one thing led to another. And um, bottom line is I, I, I learned how to exploit myself. You know what I'm saying? And be able to put myself out there uh, without waiting for a record label or anything like that, but really looking at it as a business. And once I started looking at things differently, my life literally changed overnight. Yeah, I love, um, so a very common discussion that I've had with artists during these interviews is performance. Because like during performances is where you truly connect with your audience. Like it's, it's difficult to connect in a car. You know, like, cause like it's one sided, they're lit hearing you, but they're not seeing you and you can't really see them either. So like performance has been like a really big discussion. It's interesting cause you've taken a different route in performance of like going on the streets and actually seeing everyday people, not, not necessarily even people that have come to see you. Just like random people out and about, and you've probably gotten a key look into like your true audience by doing that, by seeing the people who keep walking, seeing the people who stay and record and listen to you have become your fans now. And I'm interested to, to get your take on that and um, how you've learned to like take that experience and learn from it and what the reception has also been in Detroit. I would have this, these discussions with my mom, like we have to go out at a certain time of the day. Um, it can't be super busy outside because, you know, when it's a lot going on, well, honestly, this was, this was more of a financial standpoint, you know, when it's a lot of people around, everybody's not tipping that money. Um, but it's just things like that that you, you learn over, you know, doing it over time. Like, okay, like I said, what time to go out and, you know, um, the, the certain places you need to be. Um, but really my managers, like I met my, both of my managers while I was doing street performing. I have a business manager and a personal manager and, um, they've kind of like, you know, took what I, what I've done and kind of like, you know, built the plan off of it. Um, they, they're like the marketing guys. I don't, I'm not really strong in that department. So it's, it's even benefited you from a, a career perspective, not even necessarily just the audience. Like you've been able to build your internal infrastructure of people that you trust that have benefited you career wise as well. Right. Interesting. And now that you've done this in Detroit, like because you've seen the success, you want to take this to other cities as well. Yeah. So I'm curious to hear more about your plan for that and like where you're going and um, even the thought process of like choosing those cities. For one, I, I really enjoy being out there. And I think what, what it did was it gave me like, like a burst of confidence. So if it wasn't if it didn't do anything else, if I didn't benefit in any other way, it helped me gain my confidence. You know, I got a lot of practice in. Um, and like I said, networked with a lot of people, made, you know, gained a lot of new supporters. Um, and I know that I'm like, you know, I just always like put myself down, like, why am I not getting opportunities that I deserve? Or I feel like I deserve. Um, so I had to kind of like just assess everything that was going on and look at where am I the most successful? Like I had to really analyze my business and um, I realized, cause I've always struggled with social media. Like I'm not a social media guy. I don't understand the algorithm or anything like that. So it's always been a little tough for me to grow on social media, but I looked at that. I'm like, well, why don't we just do it like we used to do back in the day when we didn't have um, social media and just connect with people organically. Um, people can hear the pure talent without auto tune, any effects or anything like that. Um, and they could really feel my energy. You know what I'm saying? So with, you know, with that, and then also talking to my mentor in California, um, Sean B what's going on. Um, he uh, gave me the idea to really take it, you know, to other cities and stuff like you, you should capitalize on what you already, you know, have, you know, uh, um, 
what's already been working for you. You should capitalize off of that. So I said, okay, I'll do that. But I wanted to add an element to it where it was educational as well, and it wasn't just all about, you know, um, about me and what I'm what I have going on. But I wanted to show up and coming talent, you know, the grind that really goes into building a successful career, um, and not only grinding on social media, but putting in the footwork in the streets. You know what I'm saying? So um, I created a little silly concept. Um, we have to, you know, go to a city where no one's expecting us. We don't have any venues or anything like that, no major labels or artists or anything like that backing it. And we have to just set up and we have to perform and draw a crowd. And we got to make some money to get to the next city. You know what I'm saying? We got to eat. We got to survive. So I thought that would be a cool little concept for a reality show to kind of educate people, entertain them at the same time. So. Yeah, it's called the Hollis Jordan American Street Show Tour. That's awesome. Mad long name, I know. It's mad <laughs> long, mad long. I'm curious, it, what happens if like uh, any venues are like want to pick you up and like host it, host you there while you're there? I'm there. Yeah. I, I'm definitely doing that. I already know a couple people. Um, I think in Chicago and St. Louis, um, we have a couple showcases that we're going to be doing mm -hmm. as well while we're in town, but. It's gonna be lit, man. Uh, I've never done anything like this before in my life, and I, I just looked at it like I want to face my fears and I want to do what I feel like is necessary. I want to challenge myself, you know. So that's what I decided to do. July first, Chicago, we coming. That's awesome. And where can people follow your journey and follow this tour? Uh, my Instagram, but uh, I'm also I already have a YouTube channel, but. This is going to be the start, the real start of it, you know. Um, so we're going to be posting daily, like, on YouTube um, and putting together videos and stuff, showing the behind the scenes. And then you're also going to have the actual show itself. So, yeah, we're going to document this, man, and let the world see. Awesome. Well, I think we're going to wrap up this interview portion, but uh, definitely stick around because we are about to have Hollis here give you a little taste before tour and uh, play uh, with Dave. So stick around. My name is Hollis Jordan. This is my latest single, it's called Party. I brought a good friend with me. Mr. David James on lead guitar. Hey, 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 She's been a meal and a month, feeling good, trying to have some fun. Shiny outside on the right, I know that I'm the one she wants. She hit me like she wanna vibe with my puppy. And look it like you're getting money And she say, I realize that I got in your ride And I don't even know your name She asks for some time I can give her my I can please her And I'm a leave her But I'm a keep her My mind Girl, you can be my little baby When I hit it, girl, I'm a yacht and crazy And you should meet me and I Let's have a hell of a time I'm trying to vibe with you tonight You invited to the party, babe In the party I wanna see you get naughty, baby, naughty You ain't stopping till the morning, baby, the morning I'm in love with your body, baby, your body Ay, She said she never had a nigga hit it like me I told her, baby, I don't believe this shit a hobby A shawty turn her ass around, I hit a doggy Doing things that I never did, this is not me, oh But never mind that, uh, she throw way back I catch it, she says she never been in the mansion I'm a building man, fuck a pension Feeling all day, skip the far flight She asks for some time, but I can't give her my I can't please her, then I'ma leave her But I'ma keep her on my mind Girl, you can be my little baby when I hit it, girl, I'll be acting crazy You should meet me and I Let's have a hell of a time I'm trying to vibe with you tonight You invited to the party, baby, the party I wanna see you get naughty, baby, naughty And we ain't stopping till the morning, baby, the morning I'm in love with your body, baby, your body So you 
invited to the party, baby, the party. I wanna see you get naughty, baby, the naughty. We ain't having the morning, baby, the morning. So I'm in love with your body, baby, your body. Party. That was fun. <laughs>